Thanks for joining me here today for this Modeling Monday. I'm going to be modeling these Vanity 415s from Please, which I bought from Banana Shoes. Mentioned them in the video uh, back on Fashion Friday. And as I mentioned in that video, there's a 10% code that you can use, which is Juliet Noir, to get access to 10% discount off any shoes you buy from Banana Shoes. Have a look at the website, give them a look, see what you think of it. And if you're in the market to buy some shoes, use that code to save yourself 10% on future purchases. Now for today's Modeling Monday, I'm going to do something a little bit different, which is that I'm going to do a little bit of a preamble about standing and walking in shoes and practicing for sort of feminine posture. If you're looking to achieve feminine posture, then this is something that you might want to look into. If you're not, don't worry about it, skip it, it's not a problem. Most guys will tend to plant themselves like this. So when you're standing as a guy, the temptation is to put your, fold your arms, and keep yourself nicely planted. This is your kind of look. As a guy, that's what you do. 50-50 weight balance, sort of forward back. It's almost like you're getting ready to resist something. The simple way just to make things more feminine is just to shift to one side. If you start to put your weight onto one side, sort of 90% on this side, 10% here, or vice versa, 90%, 10%, if you shift 90% of your weight onto one side, what you'll find is that you're instantly creating more of an S curve shape to your body that is breaking up that straight line silhouette. Women have those curves and those curves, which we achieve with things like hip pads and with bras and breast forms and all the other things that we, we do, accentuating the flow of those curves is what can give you the more feminine posture that you were trying to do when you put these things on in the first place. So if you're wearing hip pads and then you're planting yourself, really you're not making the best you could do out of those hip pads. Same goes with your breast forms or cleavage, whatever it is you've created. So being able to shift your weight and move it around. So if you're in a conversation and you're talking to someone, shifting from side to side, just bend the knee, as uh, Jon Snow wouldn't do this, of course. Jon Snow would never bend the knee. But you need to bend the knee and shift your weight onto one leg, which you keep nice and straight. Put that weight down here and then move it around. Try and give your body a little bit of a twist and keep it moving around. You don't want to be, you know, giving yourself issues by standing on one leg for the entire night. You want to kind of keep things fluid, keep things moving, keep things animated. Whereas a natural guy pose is to stand like this, you know, staring at a telly in the corner of a room, watching the football, that's your kind of guy pose, which, you know, you might shift around a bit, but you're gonna plant yourself there for most of the night. A more feminine thing to do is to move around, just to sort of take advantage of that freedom that you have and get yourself moving. Once the leg is, you know, once your weight is on one leg in particular, the other leg can, you know, basically have free reign to do what it wants to. It can be crossed over, it can be back, it can be forward, it can be out to the side. Really that leg can do what it needs to do. And it's really just there to prop you up. It's like stabilizer. That's really all it is. It's stabilizing your movement, but all of your weight is, uh, is down here. Now, when it comes to translating that to actual forward and backwards moving and getting around the place, again, the same kind of principle applies. If you want to create a sort of wiggle or a nice kind of feminine style to your walk, a guy will basically keep their feet the same width apart as their hips and will walk forward like this. This is your guy walk. I'm not exaggerating this, this is your guy walk. You know, arm swinging, feet, hips width apart. For a more feminine walk, again, we're gonna be shifting the weight from side to side. And we're gonna try and bring our feet closer together so that they are more in a line and we are kind of stepping towards ourselves. So instead of just coming straight forward, we will try and bring our feet closer together. We don't need to over-exaggerate this. We're not trying to create some kind of crazy catwalk style, but we're basically looking to just keep our feet and our legs crossing over. Whether you're going forward or back, try and keep those legs crossing over. 
And that way you are keeping that line much more delicate. Now I can do this fairly well. So for the most part, I can sort of walk around fairly easily because I've had plenty of time to practice and to get myself used to this. And once you start getting into it, backwards is a bit more difficult. Once you start getting into it, you can start to put more of a wiggle into what you're doing. So you can put your weight exaggeratedly to one side or the other, and you can shift things around and have a bit of fun with it. It's really just about having fun with your walk and seeing what you want to do with that. Now what you do with your arms, again, a guy is kind of marching. It's very rhythmical, very straightforward. You know, forward, back. Whereas as a woman, the tendency will be to sort of move things slightly more side to side, like so. So rather than forward and back, like you're kind of tin soldier, instead, slightly more sway to it. And what you're doing is you're bringing your shoulders slightly around, just to sort of take things up a little notch. And as you come back, again, that's your kind of standard view. So if you can take the time to practice that, that can make all the world of difference. One of the things that is quite hard is to, you know, to remember this when you first start. When I first started cross-dressing, I found I would slip out of this. You know, you'd find yourself suddenly standing like this and then, oh, hello, move it to one foot, you know, and, and you have to remind yourself if you want it to be seamless. But at a certain point, you put the heels on, the heels are the trigger, put the heels on, and I find that I just suddenly sink into a more naturally feminine pose, and I will tend to maintain that purely because I've, I've got that, I'm on my heels and I'm standing up. I've got that kind of vibe in my head that that's the way I should be, you know, that's the way I should be acting, that's the way I should be dressing, it's the way I should really be standing right now. And that's quite an easy thing to get into the habit of if you have time and if you have the availability to practice. That's really the key thing, is the time and availability to practice. Now, one thing I would say is that when you're coming downstairs, I can't do stairs for you today, but one tip I would give you is that when you're going upstairs, make sure all of your weight is on your toes. So as you're going upstairs, all the weight on your toes, you don't want to try and put the weight back flat and find that your heel goes off the back of the stairs and you end up slipping backwards. Also, when you're coming downstairs, as a guy, I will, you know, come downstairs, the weight on my heel. You can't do that in heels. The best way to come downstairs is to turn to the side and just come downstairs using a diagonal action. That works really, really nicely. It's a very nice way to just come downstairs nice and evenly. So that's something I would definitely recommend. So for the rest of this video, um, some of the things that I do to practice is I will try to make sure that I've got my balance kind of moving round and round and that I'm able to cross my legs over and try and maintain that balance as I move around. This is quite a difficult thing to do because I still find now that I will kind of you know, lose my balance and I'll have to put a foot down just to be able to maintain kind of a decent rhythm to my, to my walk or my movements or whatever it is I'm doing. But that's kind of natural, you know, these are not the easiest things to move around with, especially when you've got your weight on the quite a thin heel. But still, it's nice to be able to kind of get yourself into a zone of moving around, enjoying the space, and being able to then think about adding in some extra movements, dancing, for example, and getting your feet moving. One of the things I find that's good about these shoes, which is one of the reasons I buy them, is because they allow me to have this kind of free movement, and I don't feel like I'm you know, on platforms, I'm not tottering around, I don't have the weight of a platform on my feet, 
I am able to move around and I am able to dance more animatedly. And that means that if I'm out doing something, if I'm out having a dance, for example, then I can, you know, I can maneuver around and trot down and grab another drink or something like that. And I'm not kind of just swaying with my feet planted because I don't have the freedom to move. And it's one of the nice things about dancing in heels is to be able to get out and move around, to do stuff like this. It's really, really useful, really fun, really interesting, and it's nice. So I like to take advantage of it. Anyway, that's it for this video today. This was the Modeling Monday, but again with a bit of a stuff thrown in there about how to maneuver, how to walk around, how to make the most of your time in heels if you have that available to you. As I said in the last video, if they're new heels, just wear socks. I know it doesn't look nice, but wear socks, break them in. I've had about six, seven, eight hours in these shoes now. And they're now at the point where I feel I could wear them out. I can go dancing, I can walk down the street and I've got control over my feet and I've got a whole evening's wear out of these without discomfort, without feeling that I am somehow gonna miss out on part of the night or that I'm gonna have to go and change them. Always well worthwhile putting that time in just to kind of break them in like you would with the other end of the shoe. I wouldn't wear a guy's shoe out for the first time if I had to do a lot of walking. You know, if you're going around to someone's house, you're on carpet and you're sitting down for dinner for the evening, who cares? But if you're gonna go walking for six, seven hours or something, you really do not want to be breaking in a brand new pair of dress shoes, whether they are heels or whether they are standard guy shoes. So it's exactly the same principle. The shoes, you don't wanna be breaking them in when you need them to be operating at their best and that's when you're going out. So always try and get them broken in at home and then when you're out, you can have the most amount of fun that it's possible to have wearing their shoes. So thanks to him here today. I hope this was useful. A bit of a change on Modeling Monday just to give you a bit more information about how I move around and what kind of stuff I'll do at home. If there's any comments, please let me know in the comment section down below or you can get me through my email address which is julietisnoir at gmail.com or my website which is julietnoir.uk. As ever, thanks for watching this video. Feel free to like, share and subscribe. I look forward to talking to you again soon and as ever, bye. Bye.